What's up, people? I am back for another video. Today, I am reviewing Alien Romulus. Um, and this is going to be more of a rant. This movie, I'm going to be honest, I always had a bad feeling about this movie. I just, everything I've seen, and I like Fede Alvarez. You know, he's made, don't, he made um, Evil Dead reboot, which I did really enjoy. But he also made Don't Breathe, which I really didn't like. So he's hit and miss, but I do think he tries. And I think I was saying this yesterday when I tried to shoot this video, but it just didn't catch. I really feel like this film too much relied on, because I'll admit, if I had to guess really quick, because I only got like really one positive of the movie, is that it looks good. A lot of the set design is really good. Like it looks like what you think an alien film should look like, obviously. They're going for, like, obviously the look of Alien and Aliens, which they do nail for the most part. And now that makes me think, like, I think Fetty Alvarez got too caught up in the special effects that I honestly think he ignored the story. I'm, like, starting to think that now. But, like, it's starting to just feel that way. Like, it just feels like um, that he got too caught up in the CGI because I'll admit, it looks pretty. And even, like, before the release, the film, they were just marketing, like, how, like, the practical effects were going to look and all that shit. And to me, that's not what made the original Alien great was the effects. It was great characters and great storytelling. And unfortunately, I think that's what gets sacrificed here because pretty much the plot of the movie is these, I guess, a group of kids who work for, they work for Wayland. They're minors. But you don't buy that they're minors. I'm sorry. They look like, I'm sorry, they look like a bunch of college Gen Z kids. It's like, I don't buy that these people would work in a mine. Like one of the great things about that original Alien is how blue collar everyone looked. They looked like people who knew their shit. Like the first one, and Aliens even. You know, like, experienced military, you know, all that. Even Burke, even though he was duplicitous. They, like, they felt like characters that you would, that fit that world. These characters just look like, I'm sorry, I would accept them if this was, like, some slasher movie or some uber supernatural ghost kind of film. But it doesn't fit Alien. And that's fundamentally why I think this film just doesn't work is the cast. You don't care about any of these characters. Rain, I think, is her name, or I've seen her called Rip Offly, or I called her Rip Off Ripley. That's what she is. She's just there to be the Rip Off Ripley of the film. You have Andy, who's a synthetic, who's reprogrammed to be like a brother, who I'll admit he's like the best character in the movie, but he doesn't start off great. He starts off like there's this weird plot with him where. It's almost like, I don't know what you call it, like synthetic racism or people are just shitty to him because he's a synthetic, right? And he's like seen as obsolete. So it's like, that's almost his entire arc. Granted, there's a scene where he does the switch up and he becomes more in line with like a, what original synthetic's purpose was to work for the company, Wayland, you know, Yutani. And he becomes a better character, but it doesn't save the movie because every other character sucks. You have uh, Navarro, who's just there to get the chest burster out of her chest. The other girl, who's just pregnant, that's, I think, um, Rain's sister, I, I think. And they're, um, or no, uh, Tyler's sister, not her sister. Tyler, who's like this British guy who, my God, him and his brother, I do not understand what the fuck they're saying at all. They're like, oh my God, the accent's so thick. It's like, the most thickest British, like, you can't even understand what they're saying it is that bad. Um, and they go on, they have to go to the Romulus, which is the ship, or the space station, which, fundamentally, my issue with this movie is just how unoriginal it is, just unimaginative. A lot of the alien sequence you've seen in other alien movies done better. You know, there's little things where you can do little callbacks and little things like that. But when you're just like bl blatantly stealing scenes and obviously and a lot of like what I saw in that first trailer just 
why is like this is gonna suck because it's just gonna be an unoriginal uninspired movie and that's exactly what it was the, the every xenomorph scene was just scenes i've seen done better the xenomorphs don't even feel like a threat really in the movie if anything the, I would argue the facehuggers felt more like a threat than the actual xenomorphs did. Um, it rips off, obviously, elements from Alien. I would argue it rips off all four. The, the ending, where I'll just spoil it. Bio, uh, Bjorn, um, which is Tyler. Or no, Kay. That's the pregnant woman. Who, she's just there to be pregnant. She has no other character arc in the movie. She doesn't really have any memorable dialogue, which that's going to be the other problem. This dialogue in this movie is very bad. It's very basic. It's exposition dump kind of shit, where they just kind of tell you, instead of showing you, which is what a movie should do, occasionally tell you, but largely a movie should show you. In this, it's very much like exposition dump. the baby that Kate gives birth to turns out is a hybrid of a Xeno and a human. <laughs> this is when we get this mutant Xeno hybrid introduced and I'm going to probably make this the thumbnail of the video because it is like a what the fuck. <laughs> the movie really falls apart in the third act. For me, it fell apart way before, but definitely the third act. <laughs> Just goes full on retard. <laughs> Literally, though, it rips off Alien. I mean, even, like, you have a scene where, you know, rip-off Ripley has to hide and, you know, run from the... Instead of a xenomorph, it's the hybrid shit. She even shoots it out of an airlock, like, in the original film. It's like... And then she has a scene where she goes into, you know, before she goes into the cryo sleep. You know, she has, like, a little speech about, like, the unknown. Kind of like what Ripley gave in the first Alien. It's like, my God, movie. I was drawing this movie yesterday. It really feels like a bad tribute concert. That's what this is. This is like, and that's not what the title of the video is going to be. Aliens Greatest Hits. Because that's what this is. This is just all the scenes you've seen, but done better, all put into one movie. And that's why I just didn't like it, fundamentally. And fundamentally, this why it kind of is the worst one to me. Because of that. Yeah, Resurrection arguably is probably a worse movie. Like, objectively but at least resurrection tries something this doesn't try anything this is just this is worse than playing it safe almost this is just let's just give do all the member berries people like but just shove it down your throat it's, it's not really done well in my opinion it's not particularly the only good thing about the film i'm gonna keep saying is it's shot well and there's some good set design but what's sad is, what makes it worse, though, is, I'll spoil, they do bring back a character from the first Alien, and it's, uh, they bring back Ash, even though Ian Holm died, it's, like, de-aging, kind of like what they did, they did with Christopher Reeve and The Flash, it's that kind of shit, it's fucking bad, how bad he looks. It is jarring, because how good, like, the set design mostly is, and then when they bring him back, it's like, what the fuck? And it doesn't help that he's in bright lighting. He is in uber bright lighting. It is like, why? Why even really bring this character back? I don't know if they felt like the film needed an antagonist. Because that's kind of what he is. He's brought back, obviously, because they need the Prometheus strain, which is what... I'm not kidding you. That black goo that you see in Covenant, they call it the Prometheus strain. But what makes no sense is... They don't acknowledge this in Aliens, and this is supposed to be set between Alien and Aliens. All this does is just fuck up the lore, because now Wayland apparently has been secretly wanting, I guess, evolved people that with their bloods mixed with Xenomorph. It makes no sense! That was never a thing! That's n Ugh. Like, it's just stupid. I would have rather, like, I think the other problem is the, the term, Alien is getting to kind of where Terminator is right now where all they're doing is just remaking a Terminator 1 and 2. I mean, you think about it. I like Terminator 3 like as a dumb, fun movie, but if you're being real, Terminator 3 kind of did that. 
where we're just gonna do kind of take what made the first two films great and do those kind of you know you always have like a big chase with between the two the good terminator and the bad terminator that's kind of what's happening here alien has become that a group of people go on a ship or they find like a space jockey or they find an egg and then the xenomorph that's the only difference here there's no eggs you um the the xenomorphs were cryogenically frozen but because they need the supplies i think they needed some cryo stuff they accidentally awakened the the face huggers so that's how you find the face huggers here but relatively the same way they find the face huggers one of them jumps on them chest burster what then grows up to be a full-size xeno xeno carnage in space that's kind of what it's become and it's become a meme alien just kind of needs to die because you're just making the same alien movie don't me wrong i love self-contained horror i love the idea of it on paper you know a, a good cast of people on a ship with an alien could be really good but i think that premise has been done to death now i'm okay with it if they want to do it in like video games and maybe even like i know noah howley's doing like a, a alien show that's supposed to be like on fx I'll check it out. Uh, I'm. I don't know. I don't have my. I, I'm kind of. I'll be honest with you right now. I'm kind of. I have. I my expectations are just not there with Alien right now. They just. I don't know why they just can't make a good Alien movie. So I just rather them move on. But if or if they're going to do it, I've said I want not because they've never really explored this Xenomorphs on Earth. They kind of did it in AVP Requiem, but that film isn't good. So. I want to see it done, like, legit try that. I think that's such an interesting concept that's not been done. But they don't want it. They want to just keep making the same Alien movie where it's just Xenom, a group of people, find facehuggers, and then they get attacked by the facehuggers. And they just want to keep making that kind of film. It's like, it gets to a point, like, how many times can you make that fucking movie? You know? And I just was a little disappointed not a little i was really disappointed by that because th there is a good some good set design but it just it doesn't save the movie you don't care about any of these characters you don't care about like i guess rain's arc is they literally do an on the nose joke where she's like the canary in the coal mine it's so bad dude it's like i was watching i'm watching mauler before i was doing this video i was watching mauler talk about this movie when he mentions that because i'll be honest i didn't even remember that i'm like oh my god that's so on the nose and apparently like she wants to see the sun and andy wants to be there with her to see it. it's like why do i care about this shit i don't care about any of these characters compared to like you care about dallas you care about kodo fucking ripley you care about you know not going to aliens you know new hicks Vasquez, Drake, that entire, you know, Marine crew. You you care about those characters. You don't care about these characters in this movie. Fuck, I even care about the prisoners in Alien 3. Then I do these characters. I don't care about any of them. They're just a bunch of 20-somethings I would see in some generic horror movie. They don't feel like that. I don't feel like they should belong in Alien. They don't feel like, they don't look like people you believe be a are minors i'm sorry i don't buy it you know and i'm not saying all minors need to be like a bunch of adult men but god damn these just i don't buy these like I, I just thought about this too the world looked a little too clean maybe not the world they did I, i'll admit the set itself looked good it looked somewhat lived in but the characters themselves looked way too clean they looked too polished like i saw mauler mention something i haven't even thought about that first alien, the amount of people who are just sweating and just look like they're in peril because, you know, they're sweating because they're freaking out about what's going on in the situation. And it makes it that much more real. You feel like, oh, wow, you feel for these characters. And that's what adds the aesthetic of the movie. But when you get characters like these who just look like a bunch of polished Gen Z kids, it just doesn't work, man. And fundamentally that's why i just couldn't vibe with the movie sorry and i'm like i had a feeling i knew i wouldn't just because i once i really saw the cast i was like oh god this movie was not gonna work um 
I'm thinking though Monday I might do a fixing because I was thinking about it last night. I think you could make this a good movie. So I'll talk about that on Monday. And then maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, I think I might talk about like how to fix Alien as a franchise. Because I think Alien needs to go a different direction. I think that's the other issue. And I'll talk about that more once we get closer to the end of the video. But I just thought like this movie was just so unoriginal. And when it does try something new, and it's not even really new because that's been done. The human alien Xeno hybrid, that was done before. That was called Alien Resurrection, and that wasn't really well liked in that movie. And the, the fact they try to do it again here makes no fucking sense. People didn't really like it in Resurrection. I did it. I remember as a kid, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Why? Why? No one wants to see a human Xeno hybrid. That was stupid. And then thinking, like, I guess they're trying to make it seem like Wayland thinks, oh, because we need people who aren't like. Because pe we don't need people to evolve because Xenos can, like, withstand, like, cold, heat. Like, they can withstand anything. They're seen as, like, the perfect organism or specimen. So they want to, like, they want people to be like that. It makes no sense because none of this is mentioned in Aliens or even after. <clears throat> so I don't know why they thought adding this made would make any sense. It was almost just done because they wanted to tie in, like, all the films together. Like, they even tied in, like, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. So I think that's all they were doing. And it makes no sense if you really think about it because none of this is mentioned again. Ugh, this film is not good. I'd only say watch it. It, it, will, it will probably go on. I'm assuming Hulu because Hulu is where usually, like, all the Alien and Predator movies are. So most likely Alien Romulus will be on Hulu. Just wait till wait till then. You don't need to go see this in like the theater. It's I I guess you'd only go see in the theater, I guess for the cool set design, but do you really want to spend the ten, eleven dollars just to see a cool set design? If you just wait till you get home get home, watch it at your house on your nice TV. You're better off doing that than just paying money, you know. But anyway. Alien Romulus is a four. I might give it a four. I was, I think yesterday I was thinking four and a half, but I'm going to break it down to a four. It's not a good movie. It only looks pretty. You don't have good characters. You don't have a good story at all. It's paced really badly because there's just points where before they find like the Xeno, the, the face huggers and stuff, they're just kind of aimlessly walking around on the ship looking for shit because they want to find like some cryo stuff. You know, like the, you know, the cryo freeze, that kind of shit. But it makes no sense because, I'm going to say it again, it's paced really badly. You're just, they're aimlessly just walking around. Like, when you watch that first Alien, you don't feel like the characters are just walking around. Even aliens, when they're, you know, exploring, like the Marines, they're exploring for a reason. And it's still paced well. You also got Ripley and, you know, the captain on the outside, you know, directing them while watching them on the camera. So it's like you still feel like a film's happening in this. They're just kind of aimlessly walking around until they get to the water scene where you find the face huggers in the water. That's it. Like until that scene, shit doesn't really happen. It's, I mean, the shit that does happen is forced exposition. It's a bunch of exposition dumps about what's going on with each character. Like, I guess Rain or Rip Off Ripley's fucking arc, arc in this movie is... She wants to protect her brother, even though, because, but turns out she, the planet she go, wants to go to, apparently doesn't allow synthetics for whatever reason. So she's going to basically abandon him. And we're like, we're supposed to care. Like, it, it really, and, and I guess, uh, the, uh, Tyler, um, has issues because, Apparently, he has issues with Andy because Andy, I guess, like, one of the synthetics, I guess, allowed his parents to die. Um, so that's what happens. Um, so it, it's so bad. Fuck this movie. It's not the worst movie I've seen all year, for sure. That's coming next week with the Crow reboot, but this just isn't good. It, it didn't need to be made. I would have rather... I fuck, I would even rather seen the the Alien Covenant sequels. At least Michael Fassbender would have been in that. He could have maybe carried that movie. You don't have that here. You don't care about any of these fucking characters. 
you don't. I don't care about literally anybody in this movie. They're just there. I guess some people might... I, I guess I could see... Because it's competently directed in the sense it's shot well. You have good set design. So I think there's going to be a portion of people who are just blinded by that. I don't think it's good, though, personally. It's not paced well. It's You don't have good characters. And that's fundamentally what made that original Alien work, is the characters and the story. T like, tightly, those two things together is what made it. And then in this, you don't have that. So, and they even, like, try to tease, like, another movie. Like, they basically leave it open for another one. I'm like, I hope this flops. I don't want any more Alien movies. Maybe Alien can be, like, a video game franchise. At least a video game, you can play it out. You know, you could be the person maybe running from the Xeno, or you could be the Xeno. There's at least that aspect about it that can make it interesting. In a TV show, you could see that with a longer form, because you got more episodes, maybe you can get more background on Wayland and stuff. That could be done well, so we'll see. But something like the movies where we're just getting the same alien, aliens, clone, I don't need that anymore. If I'm just going to be just getting really bad, mediocre clones of the original two, I'm just, I don't need that. So, anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to get ready to start the review. Tomorrow, I will be reviewing Eraser, which I rewatched on Thursday. Really fun movie. Very underrated Arnold movie. Like, it's one a lot of people <clears throat> don't really talk about, but it's a good one. So I'll be reviewing that tomorrow. But anyway, oh, before I wrap, later today, like a couple hours, like around like under two hours from now, I will be doing the Pin Down podcast. So I will I'll be talking to you guys there. But other than that, let's get uh, started on Alien Romulus. starts we basically see uh, <coughs> a Wayland space probe pick up the they find the wreckage <coughs> of the Nostromo which I guess it was kind of cool seeing some parts of the Nostromo but that was <coughs> that was the opinion of guys remember the Nostromo and they pick up a, an, an object that looks like a xenomorph or like <coughs> a xenomorph in it <laughs> then we're introduced to Rain, Rip Off Ripley, who, um, she works for Waylon, and her whole thing is she agrees to go with Tyler on his trip, or on his mission, because they think the, this, the, the, I don't remember what the ship was called, it's called the Corbillon, but it actually is the ship Romulus, but it's called the Corbillon, and she agrees to go because she feels fucked over by Waylon, which, that could have been interesting to really explore because I'll admit, it's kind of we've never really seen a film where it's on actually people working for Wayland Utani, like knowing what it is and what they do, and that'd actually be kind of interesting to see that explored. But they don't explore it because they're it's about this like she has trying to force this like connection with her and her brother, um, Andy, who's a reprogrammed synthetic. And they're like, they, they're scenes together. You don't feel their can That's the fundamental other problem with this movie I didn't even mention. Is the, you, none of the, I'm not going to call them the crew, the, the people that are just forced to be together because the plot says so. Or the, the body count. They're just together because the script said so. You don't feel that sense of camaraderie. The crew of the Nostromo in the first Alien you felt that camaraderie. You felt like these are people who've worked together for years. Or even just the Marines in Aliens. They like they all feel like they all know each other. Like They feel like th this is a unit. You buy them as a team that have known each other for a long time. 
in this, it's the epitome of the script said we got to be together because the plot said so. That's it. You don't, even just with it, within Andy and Rain, I don't feel their connection. I don't feel like why she cares about him. Because even the movie's like telling you, oh, she's a, he's a robot anyway. He's not real. Because she has to cup to deal with the decision because she's going to this planet and it doesn't allow synthetic. She has to leave Andy behind. But you don't care. It's because, one, it's a right mentality, but also just, it, you don't fucking care. Because I don't, you don't feel their chemistry at all. Even with this, like, I felt the relationship, even within Bishop and the, the Marines, and the, the, even within, and obviously with Ripley while, towards the end of the movie. You felt that relationship. You know he's a fucking android. Fuck. Even Ash in in the Nostromo. You you felt the relationship with him a little bit. He, obviously before he... That's why when he fucks them over, you actually are like, what the fuck? You know, you get mad at Ash when he fucks them over. Because you felt that friendship. Whereas in this, I don't. I don't care. They're just there. So anyway, this is where we meet the other... Gen Z kids, Tyler, I think one of them was named Bjorn, Kay, who's the pregnant one who's just there to be pregnant. That's literally her character. There's nothing else to her character besides that. It's um, Navarro who noticed she looks like, because that's like the thing I noticed when I was watching this the first of one I was watching this yesterday, was how much she, I was like, she looks like Ripley from Alien 3. I'm like, that's on purpose. She's even dressed like her. She has like a brown kind of jacket a brown outfit on and stuff and it's like that's clearly supposed to be ripley hold on check something i just wanted to make sure it was still filming because i tried recording this yesterday but but I was, I was trying to record this yesterday, but the footage, like, fucked up, and it was just too late to, re- to do another take, so I just, like, fuck it, I'll just do it now, I'll just decide I'll do it today, but, yeah, so... <coughs> so, they, this, they go onto the ship... <coughs> and Bjorn, who he basically his whole character is he's the asshole. He's the asshole to Andy because it turns out, I'll just say it here, his parents were killed because they worked in a mine, and because a synthetic decided to make the decision to, to let the, the parents actually had his, he wanted to save the other crew. They don't really go into it, it's just an exposition dump just to explain why Bjorn's an asshole to Andy. That's pretty much it. It's it's so like, wow. You didn't even put any thought into this. Just like exposition dumps is some of the worst way to do dialogue because it's not real dialogue. No one talks like that. No one just dumps a bunch of exposition. No. You gotta show. I don't you know, I'm okay with talking about the plot here and there with the movie if it's done well and it's done interestingly, but when you're just doing a bunch of exposition dumps so the audience can understand shit, that's lazy writing, and that's what a lot, a lot of this movie does. There's a lot of that. <laughs> that's pretty much the only dialogue in this movie is just a bunch of exposition dumps. Like, anyway. So, because that's when, because this is the scene where I was talking about Navarro explains to, to rip off Ripley why she, Bjorn hates uh, and you know Andy, and this is shitty to him. So this is where I think they find Ash. Oh no, no! Before that, they try to steal a bunch of cryo cryo stuff, but they realize that a bunch of them don't work. But then they find one that does. But they end up obviously releasing the face huggers and. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to love the face sucker scenes, but it really, I don't like the fact that there was like a million of them. I, I just, to me, it takes the scariness. Like that first sailing, you only had one, one face sucker. Fuck, even aliens, 
you had only one in a major scene. You see, I think you see a couple of them in the background in Aliens, but largely you only have like the one major scene. That was when it was trying to attack Nude and Ripley, and it's like that's a good scene. And I just even AVP, I kind of had the same problem a little bit. Like when I rewatched it recently, when I was like, yeah, because that that movie, there's like a bunch, there's a scene where like a bunch of them just jump on people. I'm like, yeah, it's not a that doesn't hit as good because it's like, oh, uh, we're just, it's like the the problem with modern stuff is they, they just think you just have to have more, you know, like twisters. You just, instead of one tornado, you have two. Instead of one Death Star, you have a bunch, like in Rise of Palpatine. It's like, it's that kind of shit. I don't like it. it to me, more does not always, there are times where it makes sense. Obviously, Aliens is kind of did that and is like the perfect way to do it because obviously there's more than one Xenomorph. So in Aliens, you see a bunch of them. You even see like a different type because you see the Warriors. They're the Warrior Alien Xenos. That's, that's the one with like the, the ones you see in Aliens, largely. And the one you see in Aliens is a different type. So I like that you see the different types, but it makes more sense why there's a bunch of Xenos. It's explained well. It doesn't just feel like more. It's just we have more because it's better. That's the problem where I feel like a lot, that's like a modern mentality now, where I just feel like they think more equals better, and I think that it 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 rears its ugly head here. It's like more face huggers doesn't make it good. Like I would have liked the scene of the Zeno, like the face huggers in the water. That was kind of cool, like the idea of that. If it was just one or two, okay, that would have been kind of cool. One or two face huggers trying to get them in the water would have been cool, but it was like a shitload of them, so it takes the effect off of it. So they manage to close the doors, but one of them sneaks up. One of the face huggers jumps on Navarro. This is where they revive Ash, who reveals the only way to stop them temporarily is with you cryogenically freeze them. So they, they freeze one of the face huggers that gets off of her, but she's unfortunately, she still gets a chest burst or plant implanted in her. And this is where they add things. I think. To override the lockdown, they need they you they put a different chip in Andy, and this is where Andy, in my opinion, he gets a little bit better. He becomes smart actually, but he does become more like the the typical android where he's you know, it's what's best for the company because initially it's what's best for Rain or you know the main character. In this, it's what's best for the company. Which don't be wrong. If he was like that the entire movie, it would have been cool because he was a he here. He was actually, I thought he actually got to showcase his acting too. Because in my opinion, before the character they were trying to have him be, he didn't feel like a character to me. It felt like you're just a bunch of just exposition. You're just there to be the exposition in this force connection with right rip off Ripley. At least here, you actually he feels like a character, but unfortunately, he doesn't last long because he goes back to what he was at the start of the movie, towards the end. Um, and... Um, Kay, I mean, Andy tries to stop... Um, no, okay, so it was Andy who... Re, he, he's the one who revives Ash. And Ash tells him about the Xenomorphs. And my God, he looks so bad. Like, it is the D8. It's, like, as bad as the Flash. Where I'm like, it is so jarring because one of, like... Uh, pretty much the movie looks good. Besides that, most of the, even like the Xeno, little CGI you see on the Xenomorphs look good. So when I see this scene, it's just so bad. And I think they do it all wrong too because it's brightly lit. It's in like this bright fucking room. It, it's like the same problem they, that they did with like Leia in Rogue One because it was in the, that was also in a bright room. I get it, it's Tantive 4. That is a bright, like, that light, that that lighting is really bright in that ship. But come on, that's but that unfortunately is to me the negative. You're going to really see how bad the CGI is. And in this, it looks terrible. It looks absolutely bad. Oh my god, man. It just I I don't I didn't and it's not even just a cameo. He's in the movie. He becomes basically the antagonist somewhat or a secondary antagonist. And um so Andy tries to stop Navarro and Bjorn from escaping. Bjorn uses like a stun gun, stun baton, taser shit. 
um, on Andy. That on Andy, he tries to get Navarro on the ship, but then the chest burster emerges, which the scene just did not hit. It didn't really hit. Well, in this version, and then she crashes the ship, and apparently this is just added for some reason on the Romulus. In a couple hours or whatever, it's gonna hit the rings of like a planet. It's why that just felt so con- added, just so you could have tension. You like you didn't need that. That just felt like it because it doesn't even. I'm gonna be real. It doesn't really feel like an issue in the movie when you're watching it. The only real issue in the movie is about trying to get out of the ship to escape the xenomorphs. The whole planet descending thing, they only bring it up t- like a couple of times throughout the film, you know, throughout it. But that it doesn't actually feel like it actually fucking matters. It's like tacked on just to have extra tension when it doesn't really need it. You already have the xenomorphs. You don't need that extra tacked on extra. The ship's descending into the d- I'm like, no. And plus, you know they're going to escape, so there was no other reason to add that. Maybe instead of doing that, have it be the ship's going to explode or something. Maybe you have it be like the Xenomorphs fucked up the wiring so much that it's almost like set to explode at a certain time. Some, or self destruct something. That would have made more sense than the whole, it's descending into some fucking random planet rings. It's, oh my god. Um, I don't like how uh, I guess this is the other issue because K gets taken by the Xenomorphs because there's a scene where Andy um, doesn't want to let her in because he sees like a Xenomorph right behind her and I'll admit the Xeno looks cool but it takes her and then it cocoons her but she escapes she's like the super pregnant woman like she escapes being cocooned she jumps off like a, a pretty big drop i don't know how many feet i would say but it was a pretty big drop and she somehow survives still pray and i mean it makes sense obviously when you get the reveal later on but um so this is where andy is ordered to find the do orders for the company because they want to get the prometheus strain this is the black dude that you see in like alien covenant and it makes no sense because th- none of this shit's mentioned in Aliens. is Because that's what makes this worse. This is supposed to be set between Alien and Aliens. And none of this shit's mentioned in Aliens. You know, you actually see... Wa- there are you, there are scenes with, with Waylon Yutani. You know, with Ripley. You, none of this shit's mentioned. Well, uh, it's This is a problem with when you add prequels like this that make no sense. And now you like just convoluted the story when now like... It makes no sense. Like, well, and pretty much the rest of the movie is a lot of it. It's just the group trying to get out of the ship. Like, there, I guess there, uh, I gotta mention the ship randomly will have a point where gravity, like, well, it has like a gravity mode, which that could be cool. And they, there's like one scene where you see this is towards like close to the end where um, Andy and, uh, because Andy initially gets left behind and um, um, uh, Rain finds uh, uh, Kay and they're about to leave and then she decides not to leave Andy behind. She helps him and then that's when they get chased by Xenos. And this scene could have been really cool but the Xenos to me were not that scary compared to like the trailers trying to make it seem like they weren't really a threat. It, if anything, I felt like the face huggers felt more like a threat in this comparatively. In this, it felt like the, the they were almost just body count. They were just there, like for because K. There's a scene where they find guns, right? And and Rain like uses them just to shoot them. And there's the scene where there is like because the gravity happens, so there's like a bunch of like acid just floating. Which I mean, that was kind of cool. That was a cool shot. But it just you don't care about the any of these characters and what happens to them so it just to me it's just noise like it's just shit happening on a screen like that's what it feels like to me you know none of these characters actually fucking matter um 
So like, I guess, I'm gonna speed it up, um, because Tyler ends up getting killed. Um, Andy and uh, Rain and it, everything seems fine, and they're about to on their way to this planet. I it's called like Vaga or some shit. Um, and this is where we get um the birth of the the human Xeno hybrid. Which is what the fuck, man? I mean, just what? This is where the movie, like, it just goes off the fucking rails. Like, what the fuck? Why? Why did they think this was a good idea? Why are you taking something that people already did not like in Alien Resurrection and just decided to do it again here? Like, come on, this was fucking shit. This was such a bad idea. I don't understand. And it had a weird design. It would like it had like the face of like an engineer, and I'm I might try to find like a good picture of it because fuck it. I since you know now that I think most people are already gonna go see it now, I'm gonna just put it up as my thumbnail because y'all need to see what this shit is because this is ridiculous. What the fuck? I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. You would have been better off if it had just been like a stowaway Zeno. And then there is like a get away from her, you bitch kind of scene in this movie, and it just is cringe. It doesn't hit right. Fucking, the hybrid kills K, and, like, it's kind of the scene somewhere when it kills, like, remember when the newborn kills the queen, and it's, like, being all affectionate, and then it kills her? It's something like that in this. It's weird. I'm, like, really bringing this shit back, man. And then, yeah, Ripoff Ripley sends it to, to an out of an airlock using, because its egg was still there, which still had acid in it, so, and then she just sends it out in the airlock, and then she goes into cryo, before she goes to cryo sleep, she goes, like, this speech, obviously, kind of like what Ripley gave in the end of the first Alien. It's so bad, dude. It, it's like, guys, you really just wanted to just not be unoriginal at all. The problem is, too, like, none of the action scenes hit, because it just seems you've seen in other alien movies but done worse alien a lot of the other alien movies did the, these scenes better it's just seeing the same kind of xenomorph scenes it doesn't like oh it, there's a couple times it just stings people and it lifts people with their tails like, i've seen that you know or it kills somebody i think it kills tyler with its tongue like you know in the original like, i've seen that done too done better it's like the same kind of like, it's a bad tribute, man. This is like the greatest hits, but done badly. Like, I would have rather you guys just tried something different and not just do the same film, but just bad. Like, it's just Gen Z Alien. That's all this is. Let's see. Alienated aliens, because you could tell he wanted to basically try to. It almost does feel like they met, they just try to blend alien and aliens together. Because there's moments where it tries to feel suspenseful, even though it's not actually suspenseful like the original. But then, like, uh, like towards the end, it does <clears throat> go a bit more like actiony. But then even alien fucking resurrection with the fucking mutant mutant hybrid thing. What the fuck? Why? Like, it looked that looked fucking like some alien generator thing like what was that why that was just like i'm not gonna lie i started fucking laughing i was like what this is at that point i'm like this movie's bad but i didn't think it was like like that but that's when it jumped for me i'm like yeah this is this is trash we're even ripping off alien for and obviously they rip off alien 3 because there's a scene where it goes up to rain. If you remember like in Alien 3 where it goes up to Ripley and has like its face right on her, it's basically the same scene. It's like, oh my God. Did you did the studio just say, guys, just take everything from the good Alien movies and just try to put it all in a blender, but it doesn't actually work. Whatever you think of the Jurassic, the first Jurassic World, at least it tries something different. Even Halloween 2018, even though that has a little bit of a problem of, there's so many, there are a couple of scenes where I'm like, there's a callback to the other films. This at least, that at least still felt like it still tried something being a different type of Halloween film. It wasn't just a bunch of Halloween films put together like this is. 
this is a bunch of alien films just put all together just because they thought this would be the best way to get people back and it just it, it might get normies back who've never seen the other movies but i feel like personally if you've seen the other movies i don't really see how you can like this movie the, even the lore breaking aspect obviously like why is ash randomly on this ship on this space station even though he died on the nostromo like why why is there this mutant hybrid thing that somehow existed before aliens <laughs> but that's never mentioned ever again <laughs> oh my god and then somehow if resurrection still can and that's the first uh, uh, even though this clearly ripped off resurrection that was like we're just blending all the alien films together and they're like we're even doing that i thought it was just gonna maybe just be the first two but no they rip off all of them This is why, in a way, I think this is the worst alien. Bad as Resurrection, Covenant, are at least they try something new, and Covenant has Michael Fassbender in it. And I think at least they try some ideas, even if you don't like them. I don't like some of those ideas either. At least it was something. It was something. And it didn't feel like I was just taking aliens greatest hits i'd rather take an attempt with something different even if it doesn't hit right versus just doing this rehash where we're just gonna do the greatest hits it's just like a bad greatest hits album that's not what i want to especially with alien i don't think that alien deserves that it's not supposed to be the member berries franchise alien has always been a good story and a good bunch of good characters and they just didn't give us any of that. They just gave us Member Berry's movie with a bunch of mid actors, mid, you know, Gen Z actors that you don't care about. Andy was like the only one who tries, but only when he becomes, when he do the switch, but he changes back once she finds him, he becomes Andy like he was in the start of the film. So he becomes boring again. So yeah, it's not a good movie. The more I think about it, it's a 4 out of 10. I never plan on watching this again. This is definitely going to be a one watch for me. I'm mainly going to only stick to Alien and Aliens. I'll probably watch Alien 3 Assembly Cut and every now and then too. But those are going to be the only three. Maybe AVP just to, like for dumb fun. But I don't plan on ever watching this one again. This one just, there's no urge. The fact it was just so unoriginal and uninspired is just... This is like the if I had to say it now I think about it it's the Force Awakens of Alien because it kind of does the same thing it just re but I would argue this is in a way it's worse because it remakes it doesn't just remake the first one like a new Force Awakens only remade a new hope this remade Alien Aliens Alien three a little bit Alien four definitely by the end it's like what the fuck even like the Friday the Thirteenth remake kind of like blends like you know the first friday the 13th the second one and the third one a little bit because you know he gets the hockey mask he, he starts off as backhead jason for a little bit and then he finds the hockey mask so it is a little bit of but that, that one actually does it well and it still tells its own story relatively it doesn't just feel like i'm just watching a rehash and actually still feel like the characters are somewhat still interesting characters of this are just straight up in so but anyways guys i gotta get ready for a pin down podcast which starts in like probably an hour and a half ish to two or so now um so i'll be doing that to pending on how i feel either later tonight probably not though more than likely tomorrow i'll be reviewing eraser and i do plan on doing a fixing for alien romulus i think you can I think <clears throat> you can make a good movie out of this, or a decent movie at least. <clears throat> Instead, it just wanted to be uninspired and just rip off what came before. Just a blind kid. I, guess, I think they're just trying to get people like, oh, remember this? They're trying to get those kind of people. And I don't know if it's going to hit, because Alien fans, 
Actually, I don't know. Alien fan. There might just be some people who might just accept it because it's more of a popcorn movie and it's better than... There will be people who will say it's better than Covenant and Prometheus and stuff. I don't think it is. Uh, especially Prometheus. I don't look at that as a great alien movie. I've always said it's a good sci-fi flick. But, yeah, Covenant's not good. But Covenant at least had a cool Xeno scene in the end. And slightly better characters. At least I can remember them. And... There were still ideas in there, and it wasn't a ripoff. This is a ripoff. But anyways, guys, um, tomorrow, Eraser Review. And then, yeah, so I'm going to tell you my last hit. 4 out of 10. To me, this is the weakest Alien movie. I don't ever plan on rewatching this. That's when I know it's the weakest, because I can at least watch Resurrection again if someone, like, just put it on. I don't ever want to watch fucking... Uh, fuck at this again, like, to be honest. <coughs> I think it's a case. I think it's a case of I just so uninspired that it just like, that's what makes me feel like Alien is just, it's where Terminator is now. Like, the big problem I have with, another problem I have with Dirk Fate, obviously, besides killing, you know, John Connor and destroying Sarah Connor, is how much of a rehash it was. Just the amount of scenes where I'm like, oh, remember this chase scene from those first two movies? The big fight at, like, a factory, like, in T2, or, you know, even in Terminator 1. It's a lot of that. That's what Alien's doing now. Alien's is becoming the same thing. We're going to do this film that's self-contained, you know, where they find, like, a xenomorph, and then they have to try to escape, and then they're going to get, vent it's either going to get sent out in an airlock, and that's how it gets defeated. And you're going to have, like, a chick who's going to basically be the Ripley of the film. It, it, it's become that now. It's so sad to watch, man, because it's like, Alien was so good. Even I, Alien 3 Assembly Cut, I really like, even though I don't like some of the decisions in the movie. But you had good characters, and you had a good setting. And it was a decent ending for the Alien franchise, and then you get shit like this. That just doesn't even... Res as bad as Resurrection was, at least there was... And Brian Dourif had some good lines. You had, There were some good scenes. I liked the scene in the water. Um, I actually love the scene when the Xenos break out. I actually always have liked that scene. There's I can name stuff I like in the movie. There's a decent enough group of characters that you follow somewhat that you feel a little bit more for than the characters in this. The, the, I was always, I was never going to really like it either, just on the fact with the like Gen Z cast. That's not who you cast for Alien. This Alien is not just some generic horror. I love horror, but I don't think a cast like that fits in Alien. Alien, you need like an actual cast of like experienced adult, like you get people who are in their 30s and 40s who look like they have that actually look like they would work the fucking minds or, you know, actually know what they're fucking talking about. Not just feel like a bunch of Gen Z actors. You're told that work for minds, but you just, they don't do it. So, fuck this movie. So, anyways, I'm gonna call it here. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace.